You know what I need right now? I need a snow globe. I need like a I need a snow globe to shake. Because that's what Russ did on his 14th studio album. D. Crenny on the review. Album review, you know, because that's what I do. But yeah, I'm here with Russ, rapper Russ. 14th studio album and it's called shake the snow globe the album cover strikes me as as an award i think it's an award um at least symbolic of an award but it's it has this the circular a uh, snow globe feeling i think it represents an award i just think it, I, I don't know just that's my opinion and he mentions on this album you know, he just doesn't have control over getting those awards. And I think that's all that's left for him personally in his career to do is, you know, get one of those coveted awards, whichever one he feels like he deserves or, or wants just to have in his collection, which I understand. Shake the Snow Globe is a bit of understandable showboating, I think. I do think it's it's understandable. I do think he might do a little bit too much of it on this project, but once again, I think it is understandable. I think it's reasonable why to think, you know, he's doing it. And to be quite honest, I'm I'm not mad at it. You know, this man has been grinding for so long. So we got his projects with the demon his demon label. Or Demon, I'm not sure how he says it, but anyway, we got Velvet back in 2011. We got Apollo 13 in 2012. We got 5280 in 2012. We have Vacation in 2012. We have Straight from Limbo in 2013. The Edge in 2013. Colorblind in 2013. Pink Elephant in 2014. Brain Dead in 2014. Silas in 2014. And How to Rob in 2014. These guys, Columbia Studio albums. We got There's Really a Wolf, 2017. Zoo, 2018. And now Shake the Soul Globe is 2020. I thought Zoo was all right. That's probably the only full project I've heard from him outside of this one. For this album, I think personally, Russ does a good job on his production. And I also think it's the right amount of features as well. Maybe once many, maybe one, literally one too many features, but I do think it, it, it touches right around that sweet spot. Along with his production, there's also other producers that he brings in along with him and mixes up the track list and the flow of the album, which I do think in terms of make the listen sonically i think it plays through really really well there's also a decent amount of relationship conceptual songs kind of lovish relationship and russ always strikes me or always has struck me as a very emo artist but i think on here he does a very very good job of mixing it up i do think this is a very mellow good albums to listen to nothing spectacular but no real letdowns please subscribe for me hit that like button if you can i'm going in on russ's 14th studio album 14th studio album shake the snow globe track by track number one is need a minute this is produced by russ this is like a reflection track right out of the gates it is really smooth beat is really really smooth and I want to say soulful, but it's not soulful, but it just gives you kind of a soulful feeling. But it's, 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 it's clearly, clearly smooth. I enjoy the chorus and the verses have purpose. A very, very good intro to give you a direction with, a, with that passion to show you exactly where I'm going on this project. He... He says that here on, on Need a Minute. Number two, guess what? Featuring Rick Ross. I was, you know, caught my eye immediately. Featured with Rick Ross. Ready to listen. Boy Wonder was on a beat. For the main thing for me with this song is that the chorus, Russ on the chorus and the beat, they go together so well. So it, it becomes very catchy and very like, um, very, very like vibey in your head. It gives you that, like, a, like a, guess what? I just be like, and the guess what? Like it just it just goes together so well, and 
It's probably one of the better songs on here. Rick Ross has a decent verse. I was expecting just a little bit more from him. I thought he would go fairly hard on, on this verse. He stayed with the tempo and kind of the cadence of the album. And he just it kept it real mellow. Real, real, real Ross-like, actually. Russ is on here with his boasting bars, which I find to be um, well-placed right at the beginning of the album to go ahead and get all that out. You know, this is, you know, this is what I do. This is what I do. You know, show off a little bit. And I, I actually, you know, I like it. Number three is a lot more. A nice inspiration song. This was something smooth to cruise to. I think this is one of the better songs where you could kind of just turn this on. And I'm not a repeat type of guy, but I think this is one of those songs where you can kind of just put on repeat and really just, just sit back nice wherever you live at. Depending where you live at. You know, nice cool day summer breeze a nice breeze out you know you can just ride to this the, the bars are nice on here i mean he has he has a number of different styles he puts on this project and the ones where he really just has a passion and a direction on his flows really stick out to me this is one of those songs number four can't go on this is like a track where the relationship has gone awry like it's it's just we can't, we can't go on like this the beat is alright, but the song has a purpose, and my feeling with songs to have a purpose and it reflects with the title into the verses, I think it makes the song better in those terms for me. Decent song that when you listen to the lyrics and if you can relate, it could be, you know, for you, it could be a really powerful, amazing song for you. Number five, the Astro featuring Boogus. This is a weak song. Uh, it's an attention grabbing song. I, I get the whole aspect of kind of saying who you are, you know, expressing it, but it just seemed like just attention, attention. Look at me, look at me, like I'm, I'm an a-hole, I'm an a-hole. I mean, if that's what you are, that's kind of something in your personal life. It just doesn't work or connect for me, and I don't know for anybody. It doesn't really resonate. It doesn't settle for anybody. It just should have been left off, in, in my opinion. Six is nighttime, classified as an interlude, but it did go for about three minutes, I believe. Smooth and soulful, and his production is 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 pretty darn impressive on his produced tracks. And I say impressive because they're not really repetitive they kind of have their own they take on their own mantra their own energy their own vibe. they have their own thing they separate each other and i think he does a really good job i think he has a really good ear for sound it's a song about a woman that he wants that's gonna stay the night or come over for the night whatever you know the case may be has some pretty slick vocals on it and it and it's another one of those smooth once again smooth tracks that i think his lane is and he does it really well seven is all to you featuring kiana the day it's an out of the box track and production it's one of the few songs that sound different than the album and kiana is so dope and and they match each other's energy and sound really well on here it's a love song ish and i like like i said at the beginning how he mixes them in and out and really you know plays with that you know the different type of moods on this album i guess you can say eight is shots and i'm not sure why the talk about alcoholism and like track five being an asshole like i get it it's a part of how he rolls, I guess, about his lifestyle, but these just don't turn into good tracks, and I don't think this one was a good track either. Number nine is Patience. You know, this is a pretty cool track. Speaking on that key trait called Patience, you know, he gets back to rapping on track in that clear, thought-out manner. So when he really locks in on what he wants to rap about and he would have written down or, you know, he's got his bars, you know, focused in with right on the production, right on key. It just all sounds so well. Number 10 is I Thought You Got Me, featuring Benny the Butcher. It's a decent track. It was a good beat for him and Benny, and I was surprised Benny was on here. I just felt like it had a bit of low energy, I think. Maybe that's what it is. For me, personally, I, I just didn't think it was that 
good of a track. Eleven is Foot on the Gas featuring Devin Dude. This is a good song about moving forward. Another one of those positive tracks that I think Russ just, you know, some of his downer tracks are really good too. Cause and I'm not a downer track type of guy, but like I said, his, some of his emo tracks are really good, and his positive tracks are almost always really good. You know, this is another inspirational, with aspirations and moving forward, foot on the gas, move forward. Devin the Dude raps all right on here. Um, I, I wish Devin the Dude would have been a little more. I don't know aggressive is the word, but assertive maybe is the word on this track. Just just kick it up a notch, make it a little bit better. So it was Mama, a dope track. You know, he basically dedicates it to his mom. Not necessarily a dedicational track, but you know, he just just really getting getting his mom her her due on here, letting her know everything is good, everything is gonna be good. We good. I done worked hard, and you know this is for you. Look what I did. You know this might be the best chorus on the album too. I think that's another reason why I like it. It's real. It's genuine, and it, it fits the beat. The, the beat and the chorus, and you know, everything he's talking about on here, they they just match and mesh up really well. You know he's pre-produced this one, you know as well. And there's two bonus tracks. You know, thirteen is Civil War. It's a love or relationship song, uh, probably more relationship, you know, type of thing. You know, fighting, in-house fighting. You know, we shouldn't be fighting. Let's stop the Civil War. Has a good chorus and a well-done beat. It's decent for a bonus track and kind of offsetting it with the number fourteen best on earth featuring Bia. It's the best song on here. It's the single. Bia and Russ really rap their asses off on here. They rap very well. The beat is nuts. And, and honestly, I think that creaking sound, I don't know if Lil John started that sound, but everything with that creaking bed is usually a hit. And this one is a smash. Shake the Snow Globe, in terms of the title of the album, does feel to have a meaning and some relation to the tracks on the album. That being said, because it matters to me, I think when things sink, it just makes it feel better on a listen. And just evaluating it as a project, as what I'm doing is reviewing a project, it kind of just has to make sense. And in a sense, <laughs> it doesn't, but it always helps when it does. You know, I think I think the concept is, you know, he's shaking things up, doing things his way, you know, making it snow when he wants it to snow and letting things settle when he wants them to settle doing it his way doing things on his terms i think he referenced that a, a few times in this project i do like this project and i do like russ as an artist i like how he approaches his craft and he seems to take it seriously he seems to take his craft his sound his lyrics i, I seems like he he takes it all serious and then doing it in the right way i'm not totally sure if that's all the way true but it seems that way. D. Crenny on a review. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for me. This was a Russ. Shake the snow globe. Solid project. Thanks for watching. At the next one. For sure. Holla.